Hello and welcome to Principles of Macroeconomics. This is Module 2.1 and today we're going to be discussing Gross Domestic Product. Gross Domestic Product, or GDP, is one of the most important measures that economists use to gauge how well an economy is doing. GDP measures the market value of all final goods and services that are produced within an economy in a given period of time. This measure allows economists to compare how an economy is doing across time, as well as how it is doing compared to other countries. It's specifically measuring the production of goods and services within the given economy. And it's telling us both about the income and the expenditure of the economy. So let's break down this definition. When we talk about market value, what this is telling us is the total amount of dollars that we would need or the total amount of money that we would need to buy all of the goods and services that the country is producing in a given year. When we're talking about final goods and services, we're talking about goods that are available for final sale. This doesn't include what we call intermediate goods, which are used in the production of final goods. So for example, if we think about tires that are produced for the purpose of being sold to Ford to be put on their cars, which are then sold to the consumer, the cars would be considered the final good, whereas the tires would be considered the intermediate good. Tires that are sold to Ford to be included in Ford cars would not be part of the US GDP. We're also talking about in a given country. So here specifically, we're talking about the legal boundaries of a country, legal geographical boundaries, regardless of who in the country is producing the good or service. So for example, if a Canadian citizen is producing goods and services in the US economy, they would be contributing to the US GDP, not the Canadian GDP. We're also talking about a given period of time. GDP is measured on a quarterly basis and it is reported annually so that we're able to gauge both how much an economy is producing on a quarterly and annual basis. So when we look at the components that make up GDP, we can think about it in terms of what we call the output equation, where Y is representing output or the amount of goods and services that the economy is producing. Now, if we think about it, the amount of output that we're producing, since we're talking about this in dollar terms, is also going to reflect the income of an economy because everything that we produce, we eventually sell. So what we sell becomes the, the economy's income. On the other side of this equation, you can see that we have C, which represents consumption, I, which represents investment, G, which represents government spending, and NX, which is net exports. So let's go through each of these components. On this side of the equation, C plus I plus G plus NX, this represents the expenditure. So specifically when we're talking about C, consumption, this is household spending on goods and services. Whereas I, investment, is the spending on goods and services by firms. Specifically, it's about their spending on capital goods and services. So goods and services that they need to expand their businesses. G, net export, or sorry, G, government spending um, shows the amount of goods and services that the government is buying. So it's the spending by local, state, and federal government on goods and services in the economy. And net exports is the difference between exports and imports. Remember, exports are goods and services produced in the local economy and sold abroad, whereas imports are goods and services produced in a foreign country and sold domestically. There are two ways that we can calculate GDP. We can calculate it in nominal terms as well as in real terms. So when we look at nominal GDP, what we're looking at is calculating the market value of goods and services at current prices. So we're taking that particular year's price and multiplying it by the quantity of that particular good that we produce in that year. Whereas real GDP, we're keeping the price constant based on a base year. So we're controlling for changes in prices or inflation and only looking at the change in production or how much an economy is producing each year. So let's look at this in a little bit greater detail. When we're looking at changes in GDP, changes in nominal GDP are going to reflect both changes in the prices as well as changes in quantities produced. When we look at changes in nominal GDP, this is going to give us nominal GDP in year two 
minus nominal GDP in year one divided by nominal GDP in year one times 100%. So you can see that the change in nominal GDP is going to reflect the percentage change from one year to the next. Changes in real GDP are going to reflect only changes in quantity produced. Again, here we're going to look at real GDP in year two minus real GDP in year one divided by real GDP in year one times 100%. As you can see, because we're talking about only changes in quantities, changes in real GDP are going to correct for inflation. Any changes in real GDP are going to show growth in production, and it's going to tell us that both income and economic well-being is rising. So let's go through an example to, make, to have this make a little bit more sense. Let's consider an economy that's producing three goods, calculators, pens, and paper. This table here is giving us the price and the quantity of each good over the course of three years, 2011, 2012, and 2013. So based on our previous equations, we want to be able to calculate nominal GDP and real GDP, as well as the change in nominal GDP and change in real GDP from one year to the next. Let's start with nominal GDP. With nominal GDP, we're allowing the prices to change each year, as well as the quantities. So when we look at calculators, we take the price each year times the quantity each year. So in 2011, we take 20 times 100, and that gives us 2,000. For pens, we take, again, price times quantity, $5 for each pen that's produced, times the quantity of pens that we produce, 300, and that gives us a market value of pens of $1,500. Same thing for paper, price times quantity. The paper costs $10 a bundle. We produce 600 bundles of paper. 10 times 600, 600 gives us a market value of paper of 6,000. So to get the nominal GDP in 2011, we simply add up the market value of calculators, the market value of pens, and the market value of paper, which gives us a nominal GDP of 9,500. Now we do the same thing for 2012 and 2013. So for example, in 2012, the market value or the price of calculators has gone up by 50 cents, but we also see an increase in quantity. So we take the prices in 2012 times the quantity of calculators produced in 2012, and that gives us the market value of calculators in 2012. We do the same thing for pens. We see again, the price is increasing as well as quantity is increasing, giving us the market value for pens. And the same thing for paper. Paper is, the price of paper goes up as well as the quantity produced goes up. So here we can see the market value for paper. So as you can see, as we compare 2011 to 2012, we see that nominal GDP has risen. If we calculate the percentage change here for 2011 to 2012, this is going to give us 11,030 minus 9,500 divided by 9,500 times 100%. And that gives us a change in nominal GDP of 16.1%, as we can see here. So the 16.1% is reflecting both the change in quantity each year, the increase in quantity produced of calculators, pens, and paper, as well as the change in the prices. We see that prices are rising and the quantity produced is rising. So both the change in prices and the change in quantity produced is contributing to the growth in nominal GDP of 16.1%. Now, you can do the same calculations for the change from 2012 to 2013. And we see that yes, prices are rising and quantity produced is rising, yielding an increase in nominal GDP of 13.6%.